Hello, my name is Garrett Carmichael and today I will be giving a presentation about T-Mobile by Garrett Carmichael, Dorian Evans, Alex Benson, and Chad Churchman. Let's begin by talking about the business strategy of T-Mobile. T-Mobile's mission statement is redefining the way consumers and businesses buy wireless services through leading product and service innovation. Some ways that T-Mobile likes to structure their strategy is through cost differentiation. T-Mobile provides mobile communication services throughout the United States, Puerto Rico, and the U.S. Virgin Islands, and they want to do that as a low-cost industry disruptor, offering low-cost services, low prices, and at the same time, the same great services that their competitors AT&T and Verizon offer. T-Mobile has 22 million subscribers and they have four key elements that they want to keep as their core strategy. One is product differentiation and the means of cost differentiation is how they do it. They want to take advantage of the power of authenticity. They've made their strategies very aggressive and strategic and they have real people in their advertisements that give them real advice about their services. They're not risk adverse, they take risks. They released a chain of ads, like I just mentioned, that take on their biggest competitors, Verizon, AT&T, and uh, go up at them directly for their contracts, their data usage, et cetera, et cetera. And they also want to know their audience. They understand that their target audience is the growing millennial population whose current uh, financial climate under lets them know that they cannot afford the prices that these other companies are forcing people to pay and they want to undercut those prices in order to get more business. Now let's move on to the strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. In the internal analysis, some of the strengths that, were, that we found were added subscription benefits through partnerships with Apple TV, Netflix, Paramount Plus, et cetera, et cetera. And these partnerships are allowing T-Mobile to gain an advantage on their competitors and offer bundles and services that their other competitors have not yet taken advantage of. They also offer free international data and texting services and free in-flight Wi-Fi. This is especially important for their international customers that love to travel. They have a good pricing model. T-Mobile includes all taxes and fees in their quoted price plan. This is an example of authenticity and transparency in their consumers. They also offer 5G coverage throughout over half of its network, 53%, compared to AT&T, 29%, and Verizon, 12%. Majority of T-Mobile shares are owned by German-based Deutsche Telekom AG, which is also one of the highest revenue generating telecommunication companies in Europe. Some of the weaknesses that we found were T-Mobile has a reputation of having unreliable service because of these added 5Gs. They are really concerned about the speed in which their product um, operates and some of the reliability is unfavorable. Even after the merger of T-Mobile and Sprint, T-Mobile coverage is, stop, is still not available in as many areas as AT&T and Verizon, and this is especially noticeable in the rural communities. To maintain coverage, growth, and reliability, rate plan pricing cannot drop to meet the prepaid market pricing. Some examples of the external analysis opportunities T-Mobile should continue to offer included services that are relevant to its consumer base, their target audience, these young, up-and-coming um, young adults who are interested in these new streaming services, as well as many other bundle opportunities that allow them to bundle their uh, purchases into one and cut down on their overall cost. They also have exclusive partnerships with manufacturers that can acquire customers from other providers. They, invest in, they can invest in technology that allows more phones from foreign countries to work on T-Mobile networks. This will promote growth in uh, international markets, exchange students, visa workers, um, or other extended trip travelers that just like to travel abroad frequently. Some threats that we found were prepaid service providers with low overhead offering heavily discounted monthly plans are undercutting T-Mobile and are snatching up even um, more customers at cheaper rates. They have major supply chain issues coming from Asia and China 
computer chip shortages are still a major concern for Apple and Samsung, which directly affects the telecommunications industry. Um, T-Mobile is not that much cheaper than AT&T and Verizon, while they still have some options that are cheaper. Um, overall, you're, you're not going to get a major, major discrepancy in the price. Both AT&T and Verizon have made partnerships with streaming services, so not to say that they haven't um, explored these partnerships, but T-Mobile definitely has a slight advantage in some of their bundle opportunities, and they can continue to um, uh, use these in the future. Some financial analysis. Uh, right here we have a return on assets and a return on assets is an indicator into how profitable a company is relative to their total assets. For, uh, fair market value calculated by dividing a company's operational income, net income, by the total assets and you get the return on assets. Um, so we can see here over the course of the last three years their net income has stayed similarly the same over two years and then this year in 2022 it has taken a slight decline. Uh, the assets we can see here have steadily increased in, and then it kind of you know medians and plateaus off. So we're seeing a distinct drop in return on assets compared to AT&T here. They're a direct competitor who is high in the two percent negative during the COVID years and then jumps right back to four to three and a half, four percent for 2022. So it's very interesting here. We see some of the means of these net income numbers are dropping, these total assets are plateauing, and the return on assets is at the moment decreasing. Likewise, we have a return on equity here, which is the amount of net income that is tied into stockholders' equity. It also measures a profitability by how much of profit the company is returning on shareholder investments. Compared to the industry competitor here, AT&T, T-Mobile has remained the, steady, the steadier company during 2020 and 2021. However, the company's drop in net income, once again here in 2022, has hurt the ROE as their competition rebounds post-pandemic. Similarly to the return on assets, AT&T has overcome the pandemic era and is shot right back up to the um, lower teens. Here we have a current ratio which takes the current assets and the current liabilities and divides the two. Um, it is a ratio that measures liquidity on the current assets and current liabilities and investors use this as a tool to see if the company is solvent enough to satisfy their short-term obligations. So here we see we have several years here where T-Mobile is right under a one, so they're right under being able to cover all of their short-term obligations. That's what we want to see as investors. Um, and in terms of their competition, AT&T, they pretty steadily outrank them um, for the most part. We have one year here in 20, the ending quarter in 2021 where AT&T doubled uh, their current ratio. But other than that, I don't see too much disparity between um, T-Mobile. Some of these strategic concerns and issues um, that T-Mobile faces is industry saturation. Like I mentioned before, T-Mobile um, has competitors such as uh, Cricket, Boost Mobile, and some other smaller, not well as not as well known uh, telecommunications service providers. Um, and so the cell phone industry as a whole is becoming quite larger, um, with more affordable cell phone plans and lower rates, lower costs. That is a strategic concern for T-Mobile in the future. Companies are competing in an advanced technology and communication sector in which. Success attracts customers to buy their products and services. So in order to get more customers, T-Mobile has to raise their revenue and subscribers. So it's hand in hand. Some of the main concerns are cell phone cost. Customers want better services and products at a lower cost, which is difficult to do. 
Um, this, and this forces T-Mobile to look at their manufacturing, distribution, and supply chain options, especially right now with the current climate in China and factory closures and cell phone shortages in the future. They need to start looking into bundling functions into just one phone. For example, email, text messaging, internet, etc., etc. This all needs to be on one plan. New technology improvement for example camera phones as we move into the future there's only so much that can continue to improve on a phone so they need to pick and choose where they want to focus on and really hone in on those key characteristics they also need to focus on um, improving their landline services Some recommendations that we had for T-Mobile, one was um, talking about a potential supply change, which could be an improvement in their cost-related um, activities. Over the last three years, uh, T-Mobile's operating income has uh, increased from two, uh, 2020 to 2021, but it looks like it's going to decrease from 2021 to 2022 and that is a direct co or correlation to the increase in cost of goods sold. Compared to their other competitors whose cost of goods sold are also rising, T-Mobile has to be the first to act in order to be ahead of the curve. Potential vendor and supply changes, this would mean moving out of China and into another country, possibly Vietnam or Mexico um, are two very good options. Um, this would help cut down not only on uh, product costs, but supply chain, um, because China, had, had, over the last couple of years, has had a lot of issues with America, both uh, politically and economically. So it is a difficult situation in terms of forecasting their future um, revenues. So in terms of the big four, T-Mobile, AT&T, Verizon, uh, they need to use these prepaid services to use service of the other three. T-Mobile is cheaper for younger adults, so they need to continue to capitalize on this. They need to continue to be authentic and transparent in their advertisements on their competitors and highlighting what they think their competitors are doing wrong and what they think that they do better than their competitors. They're doing this daily. I see daily advertisements at T-Mobile using well-known actors and well-known uh, sponsors that are pushing, um, not hate ads, but anti-Verizon, anti-AT&T advertisements. That's a big deal. Um, so as T-Mobile continues to add bundles and continues to um, utilize their partnerships um, with these other companies to make better products for their com for their customers that will only help increase revenue for T-Mobile. Thank you.